Well. Hi, Emily. How you doing? Good. Well, so we were just talking about Ms. Hillary Clinton as a WTF moment of the day with her personal email system, clintonemail.com, while she was Secretary of State, ignoring the, once again, as seems to be the theme, ignoring the law as written. You can put a headset she, on so we can actually talk to you. Yeah, put a headset on. Where, you know, she was actually using that private email address outside the range of the security and the the issuance of of um, right to know or federal, okay, FOIA. Freedom of Information. Freedom of Information Acts about her stuff. And Freely accessible to the Chinese and the Russians, however. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, but now the government, well, the, the the federal government now has all of her emails from her private server that she's released to them. Yeah, this is a way to do open and transparent government. And yet she also fired an ambassador over using private email addresses. Yeah, but that's because he was just riffraff. But, but, what, what is the matter? Yeah. Do you not get this whole class structure? It's Clintonian. And... Laws no. are for thee, for me, but not for thee. Yeah, at but, any level. Yeah. By the way, as an aside to Steve, as he's wielding his own personal camera, I think you have to. Oh, move I got to move the other camera. You again, have yeah. to move the other camera without moving the wires around. So, so Emily, yes. former New Hampshire State Emily Sandblade. Please do not call me honorable. I think you are. She well, is. that's a title that once you serve one term in the House, you get. But the problem is, is that. There's an awful lot of people who get that term that I do not wish to be classed with. Mm. Indeed. That's Indeed. fair. Okay, disgusting scoundrel. How's that? That works. <laughs> <laughs> she is always honorable. Well, that's what I was and trying to get across. It, but, but it's a small age that is intrinsic to her nature. And if I shoot anybody, I'll shoot them politely. There Indeed you go. She will. Yes. We, all this time today, we've somehow firearms have always come into this thing. Hey, why not? Yeah, yeah. We are we are armed I, and fabulous. Yeah, I did go over to the Shaolin Rifle Works. Ian hadn't made it over there at that point, but I did talk to Neil, and it's like <coughs> I didn't even dare touch it because then the urge to take it home with me would have been too much. Aren't they elegant? No, They're not yet. You explain to your wife how you just spent all that money. Yeah, that ain't happening. Uh, no, I know you didn't want to have that discussion. See, you made the proper decision. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. So what brings you here to Liberty Forum? And I'm not, even though this is my first time here, I'm not surprised to see you here at all. Well, uh, I've been coming to Liberty Forums for years, uh, and it's just the, it's kind of an annual pilgrimage. Okay. Uh, Plus, I pick up new information every time, a lot of of new ideas and and new ways to cause trouble. Uh, (laughs) All of those are good things. I I thought she already knew them all. Oh, no, I keep expanding my repertoire continuously. So what did you learn this time? Because Liberty Forum, this is the third day? Second day. Second day. Second day. So second second of... Second full day. Yeah. So what have you learned? Well, I went to a talk yesterday where we discussed a lot of interesting legislative uh, techniques. And uh, there were a few that I didn't know. Sand in the gear works? Some of them, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, obviously, you know, there's some things that tend to, um, that you can do in terms of like rules implementation that will, that will, um, by their very nature, cause the government to shrink, which is a good thing. Uh, Oh, do tell. Uh, well, for, for instance, having, uh, sunrise committees, which some states have, which study a law before you even think about passing it and, and look for the long-term cost and the you know, perhaps not so intended consequences. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Well, that's, now, that is different. It's now, different. sunset laws are great, too, because it means that things like, well, like Gee, expanded Medicaid. Medicaid. Expand, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can quote that all day. Uh, you know, have a, at least a chance of going away in December 2016. Now, with the Jasperites in control of the House, I, I'm pretty concerned about that sunsetting then, but but at least the theory is it could sunset then. Well, yeah. uh, uh, Mr. Bradley there, Senator Bradley, has was on the air on WGIR a week or two ago, and uh, he was talking about um, passing it and extending it, so the Senate's goal will be to make sure that we keep it. 
Well, yeah. and we have a couple of very weak Republicans in the Senate. We know who they are. Mm -hmm. We don't even have to talk about their names. Sure, we uh, should. Uh, well, in that case, uh, David Booten and... Yeah, they're going to uh, get the Booten treatment again. <laughs> That's what they're going to get. Yes. <laughs> I can play that movie all day long. Well, um, I, I've, been, I've been hoping that Jane Cormier will come back and defeat him in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, she's now, you know, better known in her district. She's established, and uh, she understands the district better herself, too, which helps in campaigning. And she, he, she barely lost this last time, so... If she goes up, and she was outspent like seven or eight to one or something no, big. No, it was more than that. To one. Ten oh, one. it was actually, huge. Actually, it was 14 to one. It was that bad. It was. Ooh. No, it was truly. Bad, yeah. And he only won by six, seven percent. He won, he by won by three, about 350 votes, and yeah. that was it. Yeah. It was I mean, it was 42,000 versus nine. Yeah, it was, it was phenomenal. So my thinking is, is that Jane's really got the, the, the capability to go out and, and whop them next time. And that would be a, a blessing for all of us, in my view. I agree. Um, and then, of course, there's the fine senator from Londonderry who has also uh, recently shown that she's willing to break with Republican ranks on right to work. And so, she has consistently voted against it. And this yes. would be Sharon Carson. Uh, yes, unfortunately. So whether she gets points for consistency or not, I don't know, but... But we were discussing the fact that the 12-12 vote, we were talking, in fact, in the exhibit room, may um, have provided cover to Republicans who otherwise might have been inclined to vote against right to work. When you uh. have a 12-12, you get, you know, it's, it's must have, you know, it's, it is what it is. The bill is dead. And so those who might have been inclined to vote against it have been given cover for their next run. And that would be Nancy Stiles. Well, well she's never voted against it to my knowledge but there are certainly others that might who, have. who would I'm going to we need to name these people I don't know I'm I'm who, speculating who would be the sus suspects <laughs> gosh I'm looking at their little faces on the Senate roster list um <laughs> we know we have very solid <laughs> conservatives in two of our new senators Senator Avard uh, and Senator Daniels. Both of whom are excellent. excellent yes, they are. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Quiet, deliberate, thoughtful guys who who are not swayed. And very constitutionally oriented. Yes, yes. And, and real pleasures to be around. Um, I guess I'm so used to, to beating on Senate Democrats. <laughs> um, but in watching legislators and having gone through a number of training classes, we know that politicians don't want to be forced to make a decision. I or think we got that covered, yep. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so when you look at someone like Kelly Ayotte, okay, how has she gotten cover on votes? So well, we're, she might look good. Well, we're yeah. following some of her votes, and we're bringing up some that uh, don't make her look so good, like this latest bill that she's got in to further denigrate due process at the college level for sexual assaults. Sure. This is the nanny state saying, we're, we're going to put ourselves right into the bed between the sheets with you guys. Yeah, yeah. And make college administrators and functionaries be judge, jury, and executioner for some young kid's life versus if this is really true, if this is really a bad crime, call the cops, put them into the judiciary. Exactly. Yes. But we can thank the Obama administration and people like Kelly Ayotte for doing And she's a former attorney general. She so should know better. She should know better. She should be protecting the due process. But then again... It's Kelly Ayotte. Kelly Ayotte. Oh, did you see who she was sitting next to at uh, Netanyahu's speech? No. John McCain. Right next to him. I right on his guessed. right side. I didn't see the speech, and I didn't see her, but I would have guessed that right away. Oh, sure. Absolutely. But as, as Attorney she General, there. she opposed Stand Your Ground. Yep. She opposed constitutional carry. She was bad on vote fraud. Yeah. So how she, I mean, she has an R after her name, but. For what purpose? I don't know. I think you would say that she is very partial to being in that progressive part of the wing. She is, and, and, and partly because she doesn't want to have to be held accountable for votes. So 
When you can hide behind other people's skirts, literally or figuratively. Here's that word. Oh, I love that word. Skirts? Skirts. 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 <laughs> Keep going because that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you know, they all sit down and they figure out, okay, well, if, if, if I vote um, to end cloture on a controversial bill, but then I oppose the bill when it comes to the floor, I could say I oppose the bill. Well, you could have ended it. You could have used that sunrise mm -hmm. opportunity, but you failed. So this whole idea of reviewing beforehand, did you know in Maine, of all places. By the way, Susan, can I ask you to oh, move forward and sure. a little bit closer sure. to Emily, just a little bit. Sure. There we go. Um, in Maine, the legislature, the House and the Senate leadership, at the, before each session convenes, they sit down and they look at every bill that's been proposed. And they go, okay, mastodon. They go, um, potentially uh, shoring up uh, some something worthy. We'll keep that, okay? Um, banning sun tanning. Okay. <laughs> She's throwing my bookmarks away. So they make decisions as to... <laughs> and such pretty bookmarks they are. <laughs> as to how best make use of the time that they are given, rather than saying everything is equal, which, which is wonderful in concept, but in practice, when you look at the way the house is jammed up right now, oh, meeting yeah. two days a week, okay... What are there, 81 bills on the consent count? No. Uh, that's not unusual. 81 bills on consent, or maybe there were, but when, when, when you can't make sensible decisions, if you're elected to represent people, and if that is presumed that you are given the, the, the basic um, uh, portfolio to make good decisions, does it not make sense to say, is this a waste of our time or is it not? I get the whole, yeah, we're like a people's legislature. Yeah, but have you ever sat through a Mastodon hearing? <laughs> have you ever sat through... There are thousands of them every any decade. Any fourth grader. <laughs> all we need is a fourth grader to propose ending Medicaid and it will end. Fourth grader. We need a fourth grade class. They're making some phone calls. Because whatever the fourth grade classes propose whether it's pumpkins or, or the state potato, the, the state vegetable, the exactly. potato. Oh, the white potato. I wrote a post about that being racist. By the way, <laughs> I, am on, I am on record. They did a roll call vote on it, and I am on record opposing adopting the white potato as a state vegetable. Good for you. Good yeah. Good for you. So I like we, the little red ones. I preferred broccoli. <laughs> oh, I like broccoli. Too. I do like those little baby reds. Those are good. Steam them with a little butter and Roast some them. parsley. Roast them. Um, oh, that's good, too. <laughs> I like but all potatoes. Salt potatoes in particular, but I like all potatoes. It's my Irish parents. But do we... <laughs> One of them is Irish. Do we waste time because we can? Do we waste time because we don't know any better? Or do we just insult everyone's intelligence? There is that. Well, you know, I, I think... Mm -hmm. There, there are certain bills. Like I remember a couple of sessions ago, the the RC boat that ran up on somebody's lawn on the big lake, screwed over their bushes because the prop in this RC boat just chopped it to pieces, and they wanted to outlaw them or high, you know certify them the whole bit in order to use them. We see this the current bill that we've talked about before here on Grok Talk. Of uh, you know, if the car is moving faster than five miles an hour, the cell phone shuts down and you can't do anything. That that bill got, uh, I, I hear, got laughed out of the committee. And you know, that's where sometimes representatives who should be elected for their brains ought to say, "That's not the proper role of government." But we don't get that. I sat through a hearing and a subcommittee hearing on requiring swimmers in Lake Winnipesaukee to wear red bathing caps. We talked about that the last time you were on uh, oh Rock Oh, my. Talk. Yeah, they had to have a little flag Fla behind them or something. Floaty, yeah, floaty a, a little floaty. Sort of with with, to, with uh, the rope around their them. neck. And it wasn't... <coughs> oh, that's incredible. And it wasn't to, to um, warn boaters, okay? 
it was to make them a protected class of people. Oh, boy. Now, of course, you have to buy your own bathing cap. But this was a whole hearing and then a subcommittee appointed to study. Should it be red or should it be yellow? Well, I think that there there need to be not, a lot are you more nuts? barriers to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you yeah. swim in the lake and they don't see you, it's a problem. Nobody says that. Well, gee, um, we think people should observe the speeding limits on the lake. Well, yeah, okay. Not make people um, look for red bathing caps. It's it's on its head, and and when you've got God forbid, a volunteer legislator that all you require is 18 years and a pulse. That's our standard. Somebody, somebody was making T-shirts in the next room that says "Live Free or Cry." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, it's 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 very discouraging. And, and thank goodness this year my focus has been on guns. The real problem, though, is that the legislature. It, it's too easy to submit a bill and and. People submit bills for everything. I mean, things that you would never in any alternate universe imagine <laughs> could be proposed. And, yeah. and people do that. And, and it, it becomes about the process, and you're just grinding through these bills like you would grind through paperwork when mm -hmm. you're a legislator. And I was on one of the busier committees uh, when I was in the legislature, which is commerce. And we just had a deluge of bills come through every year, and it's just a matter of, bang this bill, bang this bill, bang this bill. You know, just bang them through. And, you know, nobody sits and says, do we need to be doing this? Yeah, and, because that, and that's the problem. the real thing is just shove it through, get it done. And the reality is, is by doing that, they don't get discussion, they don't get consideration, and furthermore, they don't even get, get considered whether they're really necessary or not. Well, um, I wish that would be the first thing instead of the last thing. And it seems to be the if same thing. If it was thing. anywhere, I'd be happy. <laughs> Yeah, but we see the same thing in D.C. where too many people are voting on too many bills and they have no idea what the heck's in it because they haven't read it. They probably haven't even read the summary that their staff members came up with. That's what your staff does. You don't do anything. However your staff tells you to vote is how you vote. Whoever your staff tells you to meet with, you meet with. Whatever your staff tells you to do, you do. The rest of the time yeah. you're out fundraising or you're out schmoozing or you're going to Turkey for a trade mission. <laughs> yeah. We won't mention names there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just look at this and go, what a way to run a country. Well, my, my little town, yeah. town meeting is just as bad. Oh, yeah. And maybe it's even worse because it's much more incestuous. Small I incestuous, not big I incestuous. But <laughs> There's a difference? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there is, actually. There oh. are, uh, big I incestuous is spelled D-E-M-O-C-R-A-T-I-C. <laughs> <laughs> but in, in, in my Capital. little town... D. Okay. <laughs> the fix is in. The fix is in. That's why I like There's SB2. Absolute, well, I'm not sure SB2 is any better because you go and you get to pound on the table that day and then you don't have to go back. Okay. I like SB2 because I've been there standing up against my, my, my employees. You know, as a town, town citizen, these people work for me. And, man, when they don't get what they want in the town meetings, I remember – you know, spending till midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. I'd rather just go, here's my vote, drop it in the ballot box, I'm done. And there's no intimidation. I don't have to look at my friends or my neighbors. Not that I, I don't have a whole lot of friends in Guilford, and I don't talk to my neighbors. We're pretty much. And you're not making any either. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have other have people. Have an AFP duck. Oh, I was wondering where that rubber ducky came from. Greg what Moore is gave it? it to me. They have them on their table. They make chili out of them. Duck chili, yes. White duck chili. Oh, duck ate chili? This, uh, I, um, I asked him <laughs> if they had any with tire tracks. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did not. We'll have to put those on by hand. Boy, we sure had a lot of fun with that last oh, year boy, we did. in the legislature. Um, Lynette Peterson showed up at the caucuses, and she'd always let go with her duck, uh, duck <laughs> call. <laughs> but anyways, back to SB2. I, I think... You have your deliberative session because we also have SB2 budget committee. So budget committee is actually the most powerful entity in town because it hears both the municipal and the school budgets. And then it's the, one, the entity that proposes the budgets that go to the town people for discussion and voting upon. And you take a lot of that pile on. You take a lot of that 
this movement or that movement, the, the mobocracy out of the equation. Keith Ammon, um, Thursday night, um, was talking about a his, his hypothesis, and I think it's pretty sound, says that you're presented with two budgets. Mm-hmm. One of which is the default budget. Mm-hmm. Which he's, gets gamed. He's, he's done an analysis of the percentage difference between proposed budgets and default budgets across the state for, I forget how many years he says he's done it. And he says it's less than one half of 1%. So the, <coughs> the illusion that you're voting for something is, is not correct. It is simply an illusion. And he would like to see legislation proposed that if you don't like this budget or the default budget, then you take it to town hall and you fight it out like you did in the old days, line by line. I like it. Bring Think cushions for your fanny. Yeah. But seriously, wouldn't you get more participation in town meeting if you thought you could effect some You'd type certainly get more left-wing participation. It depends. <laughs> it really, it's not so I'm much. Not sure. You know, it's not so much no? left. The lefties like it this way. No, well, I, I know th- they do, but I'm no, just saying they're think, always the ones that show up. Uh, no, I think in a minutes. lot of cases, it's, it's the town employees against everybody else. Well, certainly there's that, and there's certainly that in my town, because the town administrator has, well, I'm not even going to go there. Well, I got ousted as the vice chair of our budget committee because I refused to go along with the shiny new fire engine that the fire chief wanted and the the pseudo-union that the fire folks wanted as well. And I got dumped. And I haven't been able to get back in yet. Um... The townies and the school board people and everybody else got together and they kicked you out. They did. Kicked you off the island. They did. Yeah, but if, if, there's, if the fix is in and if people who live their lives and go to work every day and take their kids to hockey and teach Sunday school on Wednesday nights and do all of these things have to choose. Sunday school on Wednesday nights? Bible study. Bible mm-hmm. study. Oh, okay. Oh. Sorry. I was we, thinking we, Cat- come, we come from a different part of the world. <laughs> well, no, I, I get that part. See, that's Prince Pasta Night in New England, so you really uh, uh, you could well, have you spaghetti go. supper at church on Wednesday. That would make uh, more sense okay, in well New we England. Could do that. <laughs> well, see, so that, that's a Bible study. That's not Sunday school Well, because I used to teach both. <laughs> well, again, again. Somebody's happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're thank here you. all week. Yes. Um, We're here for at least another hour. So Clapping but, but, in the other room. We come back to this fundamental issue of you elect people and, and expect that they're going to do what, number one, they say they're going to do, but secondly, that they're going to represent your interests. And they do neither. Yeah. And they'll say anything to get elected. And once they're elected, then they dodge every piece of roll call accountability that they can so you can't hold them accountable. Or they hide behind a split vote. Or they figure out in advance, okay, um, we know the vote's going to go this way, so I can vote this way, and, it's, and, I can st- and I can still look like a hero. Oh, we see that happen in we Manchester are, all the time. We mm-hmm. are, and Gatsis is famous for it. <clears throat> and, and we let them get away with it because we think they have the appearance of doing what they say they're going to do. So the fault is ours, but you have to make <coughs> decisions on what is most important in your life, your family, your job, your church, or kicking politicians' asses up and down Main Street <coughs> every opportunity that you can. Yeah. I think the latter is a lot more fun. Well, certainly it is now. Well, it, but for, f- for you know, a lot of us, it is now. I did not do politics until I became an empty nester, until my two kids left, graduated from high school. Sure. Um, I and really, that's the point. A, and that's, uh, that is the point. But at the same time, there there is a part of me that says a lot of this nonsense would go away if it was more personal to a lot more people. But they are so busy. It, government is down at that fourth or fifth level of consciousness where it really should be. It should be doing only what it's supposed to do and no more. No Absolutely. less, but no more. And a lot of people think that that's what's going on until – like us, we start bringing out the big flashlights and we see how the sausage is being ground down. We go, uh, no, no, that does not match 
most people's reality, but they don't know it and they don't want to be bothered by it because you're right. They're doing other stuff. They're living life versus us who just kind of. Well, there's uh, also oh. that, that, um, that those people who uh, have begun to sense that something is terribly wrong. Thank God. But they are, Thank God. but they are afraid of the intimidation. They don't want people calling them racists or sexists or misogynists or, or having homophobes. to deal with the white privilege or a homophobe. Xenophobes. Or they, they, they or free stater. Or free stater, yeah, in, in New Hampshire, for example. Um, I had and, somebody and they're show up at the polls to, to hold a great big sign that says, warning, Emily Sandblade is a free stater. <laughs> right yeah. at the polls. Sure. But yeah. that's, I mean, they are, they do they don't want to get engaged because they don't want to have to deal with those screaming lunatic liberals who have no defense for their argument but just call you names. They don't want to go there. Well, they're also, oh, yeah. almost every one of them is, is this far from violent. You watch the body language <coughs> arguing with a liberal or a progressive, and they can't help themselves. I've never had a rational argument with someone who is truly ideologically opposed to me it has always been you can see them start to shake they start going from foot to foot their hands are, are, are grasping like this they're this close and if one were so inclined <laughs> you, could, it comes. you could get them to take a swing at you um, I didn't have to work that hard and I've had a couple push me around physically sure and I'm only for the for the people who uh, you know can't imagine me in their mind's eye I'm five foot tall are you that tall <laughs> I, I, I like to insist that I'm, I'm a full five feet tall and 120 pounds, and, and, and I look like a granny. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not a person who really can deal with somebody who's 180 pounds very, and six inches taller or eight inches taller very well, which, which these particular gentlemen were. They were both male, and they were both liberal Democrats. Sure. And uh, it has been kind of kind of um, unpleasant to deal with. Yeah. And then in the legislature, they say that the free staters and the Tea Partiers and the and the conservatives all discriminate and and ha harass women. And the funny thing is, is the only harassment I've ever dealt with was in, in the legislature was from a fellow legislator who kept propositioning me at every single opportunity he could for months. And I told him I wasn't interested, and he kept doing it, and he was pushy and nasty, and, and his language was much less than polite. And if we want to talk about who discriminates against women, who's on the edge of violence <coughs> against women or even against other people, sure. we need to be talking about the far left. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. they, are, they are borderline violent. They're aggressive in, in an ugly sense, and... I'm just hoping they mistake me for some little old helpless lady. <laughs> <laughs> just make sure we have the cameras on you at the time. This, yeah, well, when we that, could turn that into pay-per-view. That's a lesson that's only going to be learned once. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I keep saying about you, right? How I talk about you? This nice old Texan belle, smooth as silk, walking up to you smiling, walks away from you, and you look down. And your blood is in your shoes. And she's just <laughs> smiling, wiping off that little blade as she has, that she has just removed from between your ribs. Uh, perhaps in the interest of full disclosure, Indeed. I should also reveal that I, too, am from Texas. Yes. We, we, now, we, you we, don't we, have that Texas accent. I can give it to you. Honey, sure. All it takes is, is half a bottle of tequila. No, half a, one glass of red wine. White and chicken we, chili? We could, we could, oh, I was talking to Greg. As long as it doesn't have beans. 